Setting up a, a mushroom, you know, growing mushrooms, you know, in essence, gardening mushrooms instead of say, gardening vegetables. Um, <clears throat> you know, sort of need a quick overview, real quick, of mushrooms. There's basically two real types of mushrooms. Some mushrooms fruit off of dead things, um, things like tree limbs and dung and, and waste, straw waste, and things like this. And other mushrooms fruit off their mycorrhizal and they actually come off a of tree's roots. So the first thing to really do is to figure out what kind of mushrooms you want to grow. Say you want to grow oyster mushrooms indoors, it's relatively simple. You can grow them on straw, you can grow them on many different things. Yeah, but to really grow them, you're going to need a sterile room, you're going to need pressure cookers, you're going to need some lab equipment, fairly basic lab equipment, petri dishes, um, scalpels, things like that, um, agar to grow up the culture. Uh, you're going to have to get your spawn from somewhere, or your strain from somewhere. Again, I'll use oyster mushrooms as an example because they're, they tend to be the easiest to grow and they grow in a real wide variety of things. A, a type of Amanita here, and this is in the, um, this is a family where the most, 90% of mushroom poisonings are from this family. We can get inside of it and look and find the mushroom take the egg off and we can see there's the, the cap and this is called the vulva it's surrounding it and if we've split the cap be able to see the gills and it's hard to tell right now but if you look at those striations those little lines on the edge it's one of the, the edible amanitas um, I haven't got the guts to eat them yet but um, there's mushrooms that can kill you, there's mushrooms that will make you sick. There's mushrooms that, I've picked mushrooms, seen them and picked one just to have it. Mushrooms that can kill you just 30 miles west of where I'm sitting, you know. But again, education's the key and pass that knowledge down. I was 20 years old and I was hitchhiking from Eugene, Oregon to go visit my mom who lived in Puget Sound area of Washington State. It was, a, it was October, November actually, it was fall and this guy picks me up and his name is Big Jim and he's a mushroom buyer. And this was in the early 90s, you know, and, and, and the money you could get for wild harvesting mushrooms then was about four or five times what you can get now for it. It was new, and you could really, really make a lot of money. There weren't as many pickers. But I always remembered this guy and this, all this money and, and the prices for these mushrooms, you know? So the wild picking part of it, you know, that sort of put an imprint in my mind that, hey, this is the way that people who are maybe alternative and don't want to work really a nine to five job, that they can actually go out and really make a lot of money. Um, laws regarding mushroom harvesting and mushroom picking. You know, here in New Mexico, mushroom picking on a commercial level is, is still sort of in its infancy. Who regulates most of it ends up being the Forest Service, because most of the mushroom picking done is on national forest land. Um, there's laws in Washington concerning mushrooms in your car. You have to have a permit to even drive with them, even if you're not a commercial harvester. You can also get a personal pick permit in those areas, where if you're a family and you want to go pick mushrooms for the dinner table, and matsutake is, a, is the, pretty much the highest priced mushroom that you can pick in America. And it's highly esteemed by the Japanese. They sell it at Japanese markets for hundreds and hundreds of dollars a pound. And for years, the pickers would go out with rakes and actually rake the duff. They'd go, again, they're mycorrhizal mushrooms, so you have to be in the right tree species. They'd go into the forest, they'd rake back the duff to find the little mushrooms, we call them a number one or a button, that the veil hasn't opened up yet, the cap hasn't opened yet, up yet. It's still a little mushroom, and those are, are always worth the most money for pretty much every mushroom species. Pursue your, any interests you have, you know, through books, through reading, um, go online, there's great resources. And if you have a local farmer's market, maybe where you can actually feel safe picking the harvesting wild mushrooms, I think harvesting wild mushrooms is totally safe. You just have to know what you're doing.